Welcome to the License to Lead podcast. I'm Patty Fay. This podcast is for physicians or anyone who thinks healthcare needs a transformation led by physicians. License to lead means that physicians are charged with and must be in charge of guiding the vision and the culture of healthcare systems. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode number 21. I'm back this week with what I will call an espresso shot podcast, short but potent. This show was recorded at the same time as episode number 20 and features Corey Katuna and some very vocal birds native to the Yucatan. In podcast number 20, we talked about seven levels of energy, which is a model developed by psychotherapist Bruce Schneider. These mindsets progress from low levels of energy where we feel the worst and feel the least able to improve our situation to mindsets where we can see options and even get into flow states. As a reminder, level one is characterized by a victim mindset. Level two, conflict. I'm right and you're wrong. Level three, compromise and tolerance. Level four, compassion and generosity. This service-oriented mindset at level four is our focus in today's podcast. Level five is seeing opportunity everywhere. And levels six and seven are characterized by flow states, non-judgment, and even genius. I wanted this topic, fulfillment and satisfaction in our careers, happiness, if I dare use such a word, to be highlighted because it's critical for physicians to expect fulfilling careers. On this podcast, I've interviewed docs in ophthalmology, pediatrics, emergency medicine, and family medicine who are deeply satisfied with their careers. This is not a pipe dream. Many people in healthcare are motivated by level four energy, that urge to be of service. And as the profession of medicine has devolved into being run by those with a business school mindset, and as docs are commoditized and even discarded in order to increase profits, physicians put up with it all for a lot of reasons, but a big one is to take care of patients to serve. We are programmed to tolerate intolerable conditions. And many of us think, oh, what's going to happen to my colleagues if I quit? What will happen to my patients who have already implored me not to quit like all their previous physicians? So I'd like to challenge whether this hypertrophied sense of obligation is of service. Enabling dysfunctional organizations and callous management is certainly not of service to the medical profession. In this episode, Corey takes the argument even further. There are negative ramifications whenever anyone helps, despite being drained or resentful. If you'd like more thoughts on this or other subjects that I discuss on the podcast, subscribe to my every two-week newsletter. Okay, we pick up this conversation while Corey and I sit on the roof of a hacienda. Here we go. So for physicians to go from a state of like, damn, this is happening to me, I am stuck. For them to go from that to, hang on a second, I have agency here. Let me look up and look around and look at options and listen to podcasts like this one and consider alternatives and um, take action in the direction of of what I want to see. That's the education that I would want to impart on people. I mean, that's that one person changing. That's that, that micro effect that can cause ripples. Right. It's like you won't even consider the possibilities of moving to a better situation if you can't pull yourself up out of level one and it's tenacious. Mm -hmm. So maybe this relates to level four, helping energy. There is an obligation of sorts to understand the kind of work or the kind of life that puts us at level five or above, right? I mean, there's some obligation to be at higher levels of energy if we actually yeah, want to serve. Absolutely. I've heard you say if you're not happy, if you're not happy, you're not helping. Yeah. Can you say a little bit more than that? That before? is a, that's a direct Bentinho quote right there. Yeah. If you're not happy, you're not helping. It's so self-explanatory. I mean, I can look at this with my own experience. The times that I've been helping out of any reason besides sheer joy and inspiration and because I want to, I can feel the repercussions. So I can feel the social, psychological, emotional repercussions of whatever I consider to be 
helping. So what I love about if you're not happy, you're not helping is because there's so much more going on than the help itself, than the sort of physical content of helping itself. There's so much more going on. There's an energetic exchange. There's social, emotional exchange. There's your own sustainability. If you're gradually burning yourself out as you continue to help people, think about all the people two years later after you've left because you burned out thousands of people from two years on for the rest of your potential career that you could have helped but won't because you quote unquote helped people unhappily as you burned yourself out so there's just a bigger picture to this if you're not happy you're not helping both in a practical right now right away way because you're not only transferring the help the quote unquote help you're you're transferring your whole experience of yourself and your life and your, you know, how you're doing, that's also getting transferred, but also long-term, big picture. So if you burn yourself out or you are suffering or you're not sustaining yourself adequately, you're depriving the world of your generosity in the future. I think that when you're coming from a place of feeling fulfilled, your work is different. We've talked about that through the levels of energy, so it's kind of obvious from that perspective that your work is different, but there's a much bigger way that your work is different when you can see more options and see people differently. If I'm level one, two, or three, and I'm taking care of patients all day, I'm seeing them as broken and limited. And obligation. Oh, it's such an obligation. It's so exhausting. And yes, that might absolutely be inherent in the system. So more than anything, this would be a plea for people to, to step out of or transform the system, to not tolerate it, not in the sense of complaining about it or feeling victimized by it, but turning away from it rejecting it, saying, this is not for me. This is not what the profession of medicine should look like for me and for my patients and for mm -hmm. the physicians to come. I think if as a physician, you take the Hippocratic Oath seriously, you will make your own well-being, your own happiness, your own fulfillment, your own alignment with your work and your own longevity and sustainability, you will make that your top priority because anything else otherwise is martyrdom. And actually one of the hallmarks of level four energy is that martyrdom, that self-sacrifice. You just go and go and go and go without checking how you're doing and it almost inevitably burn out or lose steam. So if you're really serious about that Hippocratic Oath and you actually value being of service to others in a full spectrum way, then your first priority will be investing in your own happiness and alignment and well-being and fulfillment. It will be investing in your own deathbed life. I love that. It reminds me of a consultant that I've worked with, Eric Martin, and he said, it's not your obligation. It's anything but your obligation to set yourself on fire so that others may see Awesome. I remember when you mentioned that you wish that you had a coaching container for everybody that you interacted with. And I thought that was such an intriguing frame. So can you talk about what that means? What I noticed with normal hangouts, friendship, our day-to-day -day relationships is that there's often there's a lack of intentionality. There's just a mutual meeting in the middle, exchange of information and chatting and what I love so much about coaching, both being coached and coaching others, there's an intention, there's an urgency, there's a question and an answer, there's a seeking, there's a growth happening. It's like a container of education and growth and learning and up-leveling. And so I noticed that in a coaching container, the best is brought out of me and in either direction. So whether I'm coaching or being coached, the best is brought out of me because there's an intention for betterment that's sort of inherent in the container itself and our usual day-to-day -day interactions and hangouts. There's more of an intention for pleasure or validation exchange or passing the time or bonding. It's a slightly better intention. So, But my point is that in a coaching container, the intention is first and foremost. And in containerless interactions, the intention is at least more diffuse. So the intention to, like you said, to up-level the conversation, to grow, to learn something, to see something differently. And that's so energizing. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it's to see something differently per se, but it's the reflection. It's the personal reflection. It's the personal purification. It's the 
ability to see yourself or another, to help someone see themselves or to see yourself more accurately. So it's the intention to raise your energy, essentially. It's definitely not just the ability to hear new topics and new concepts and uh, learn about the world. Awesome. Corey, thank you so much. This has been a very intentional conversation. It has been. <laughs> it's been great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. This espresso shot episode puts an exclamation point on the in-depth podcast episode number 20, where Corey and I went around the world of the levels of energy. All of us in medicine ought to be sensitive to rhetoric about just being happy, i.e. just suck it up, in the face of management that exploits the professionalism of physicians and nurses and others. Changing your mindset doesn't mean we become more resilient to impossible work situations. I'd like an understanding of these mindsets to help you kick down the door to more career options. Options like changing your career, changing this profession, creating something new, getting involved, leaving it behind altogether, taking a leadership role, driving hard for changes in management and governance, raising a stink and being a change agent. The Levels of Energy Framework helps us envision how to transform inaction into action. This short episode honed in on the covert harms of level four service energy. Taking care of others at the expense of ourselves is unsustainable, creating a situation where we can spiral down into apathy or anger, whether we're in family or work situations. When we help, despite feeling put upon, we transfer that resentment and negative energy to those we aim to help. If we're not happy, we really aren't helping. Corey makes a call to check in with ourselves first. Feeling satisfied ourselves is a litmus test for the sustainability and effectiveness of what we're doing. If you enjoyed these episodes, you can find more from Corey on Instagram at Corey Katuna. Corey does one-on-one coaching and helps create and deliver podcasts, retreats, and other online and in-person content. This wraps up the Mother's Day episodes with my two daughters. The next podcast will be a season wrap-up Q&A with my colleague, Lynn Elliott, as we answer questions that listeners have sent our way. And we'll give you a heads up about our next season of License to Lead podcasts. One of the more pressing topics for next season will be private equity ownership of emergency departments, radiology practices, ophthalmology practices, and more. Here's one headline regarding private equity ownership. Let's stop surrendering our medical profession to those who only care about profit. Thanks again, everyone, for all of your care and caring. Thanks for listening to the License to Lead podcast. Be sure to visit licensedtoleadpodcast.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and sign up for our newsletter. Leave us a message with your provocative question or your thoughtful comments you might inspire a future episode of the License to Lead podcast. Thanks so much, everyone.